First of all, Roosevelt actually tripled federal taxes during the Depression. Now, did PBS leave that part out? <laughs> if they did, if they mentioned it, I didn't see it ever. Excise taxes, personal income taxes, inheritance taxes, corporate income taxes. Boy, that's a good time to soak companies, isn't it? Okay, you're soaking them with taxes. You're causing, you're forcing them to keep wages high, right? And uh, you're, you're making them give more power to their unions all the while they're losing customers. Yeah, okay. Business 101. Uh, holding company taxes and, quote, excess profits taxes. These are all these, these sad and sorrowful pictures along the wire from the era, the, the New Deal era, the 1930s. The result, not surprisingly, consumers had less money to spend, employers less money for growth and jobs. Secondly, Roosevelt discouraged investors at the time when they were most needed, wouldn't you suspect, to pour capital and funds into almost everybody's businesses and efforts. That's exactly the point at which the uh, central government in, discouraged them from the risk of funding growth and jobs. Tax hikes in all of those years. The aristocratic, fabulously wealthy Roosevelt, meanwhile, denounced investors, the very people that typically fuel the engine of American free market enterprise economics as what? You've heard some of these terms, economic royalists, economic dictators, privileged princes. As he got more desperate later, and I think sicker physically, uh, he, that F word, the fascist word, he was, that was not unknown for him to use. What was the result? Private investment sank to historically low levels during the New Deal era. There's a, I guess, ring around the Roosevelt the Rosie Roosevelt with his alphabet soup agencies. Thirdly, Roosevelt directed federal spending away from the poorest people? Surely not. Social Security and all those programs? Well, as it turns out, surprisingly, I'm sure to you, the Works Progress Administration, one of those alphabet soup agencies, its spending went in a much greatly disproportionate way to richer states in the West and East whose votes he needed more than those in the staunchly at that time Democratic South, which was the poorest region in the country and in most need. South had not recovered from the war between the states, America's uncivil war, I believe Kim mentioned earlier. But Roosevelt didn't need their votes, but he needed the votes of people in other parts of the country that he barely won in 1932 <coughs> and then in 1936. Those people got disproportionately in the South. A little help, though. Um, yeah, here's an interesting quote. An investigation by a Senate committee found case after case of Works Progress Administration, one of the major New Deal programs, of, of employees, people hired and funded by taxpayer dollars to you know, do work, most of it actually temporary, but case after case of them being instructed to contribute a portion of their salaries to Roosevelt's re-election campaign if they wish to remain employed. Talk about a, a party boss, Boss Roosevelt. Also, of people being thrown off the relief rolls for refusing to pledge their support for a favored candidate. So you will support Hillary, not Ron Paul, or, you know, you're back out in the soup line. And of demands that registered Republicans on relief register as Democrats, just kind of switch the old party affiliation and vote in their primaries in order to keep those jobs. Again, that's Tom Woods' uh, politically incorrect uh, guide to American history. Also, Roosevelt made it more expensive for employers to hire people. Now, wasn't that what folks needed at that time? And when you're talking 10, 15, 20% unemployment, you need to get hired, right, Greg? <laughs> You'd want a job, but yet the people that can hire you, you're more expensive than you were when the economy was good to hire. Well, uh, how about enforced above market wages that the administration that enforced that, keeping them uh, falsely high 
introduced excise taxes on payrolls, promoted compulsory unionism, and obviously that's going to lead to higher prices, less profit margins, and increased the cost of employing people fully by a quarter, 25 percent, during the New Deal years, 1933 to 1940. Result, double-digit private sector unemployment. Well, didn't it end a couple of years after FDR came in? Didn't the New Deal get rid of that? <laughs> Au contraire, it persisted throughout the New Deal era. We'll look at that a little more closely later, just how nastily it persisted. Fifthly, FDR destroyed mountains of food as millions grew hungry. His infamous American Agricultural Administration, AAA, paid landowners inflated prices for some crops and money not to plant others. Yeah, you heard that right. So, who came out on the short end of that stick? Well, how about 10 million acres of cotton that was planted and destroyed? but paid for, but never sold. Or, well, I always hate to mention this one, but those six million pigs who were purchased and slaughtered without ever being eaten. It's kind of kind of sick, isn't it? Or the two million sharecroppers, share renters, and tenant farmers who lost, lost their jobs. And I'm sure probably many of us have relatives that were, especially in this part of the country, the South and Southwest, uh, you know, the great majority of people working the land in the 1930s did not own that land, right? They worked it for other people. So guess what, Mr. Owner, who you're already struggling, the, the Hoover Farm Enterprise is already struggling to make ends meet, and he's got all of y'all out there working for him, and then uh, the government guy comes up and says, well, Mr. Hoover, how'd you like to, you know, get paid what you always get paid, but you don't have to pay these people any of it. In fact, you don't even have to plant your crops this year, okay? In fact, if you already planted them, just destroy them. We're going to pay you the whole thing. Boy, that takes care of Mr. Hoover maybe temporarily, but what about all of y'all that worked for him? Yeah, well, that's where that two million came in. That's one reason why there was that exodus, that grapes of wrath exodus to California because people around here lost their jobs. Even the liberal historians typically will mention that the New Deal, even though well-intentioned, that Agricultural uh, Administrative Act, uh, it ran a lot of those folks off the farm and cost them their jobs. Lost jobs, higher prices, and an agonizing delay in correcting an important industry that free market forces could have accomplished much earlier. Yeah, and what you had there, a political cartoon of the time, <clears throat> applying the NRA and other of those alphabet suit plans, the National Recovery Act, and it says the federal farm relief in the South, and what's it doing? It's road grading the uh, sharecroppers and the tenants down there at the bottom. It's really helping those guys out, isn't it? Thank you, Mr. Roosevelt, sir. He made everything more expensive during the Depression. I swear I'm not making this up, folks. There was less money, but everything was more expensive. And by the way, this was not the only time that one New Deal objective, the National Industrial Recovery Act, or National Recovery Act, conflicted with others. This one established 700 industrial cartel codes, okay? So does it sound like they're protecting some folks? Meanwhile, they're busting banks and everybody else. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, how the South interprets the New Deal, that picture on the bottom, what it says is under the NRA, the new National Recovery Act, Administration Act, this factory shall uh, advance wages, that means pay more, oh and by the way it will also minimize the hours that you get to work, uh, oh and if you're black or any other non-white color, we don't need you. <laughs> Those good old liberal civil rights Democrats. Okay, wages sometimes rose while hours worked went down. And as we said, it often uh, allowed and even helped business owners discriminate against black folks. Discounting of prices? You think anybody would have liked to have had a discount on prices during this era of time? Well, that was disallowed. That made too much sense. And then cartels or groups of businesses received favorable government treatment. 